Okay, so I want to introduce myself first. My name is Bronwyn Carlisle, and I am Programs and Special Projects Manager at Indiana Humanities. And I know that a lot of you are familiar with Indiana Humanities and what we do, but I want to um, give just a brief overview of who we are in the case that you aren't super familiar with us. But Indiana Humanities is a statewide nonprofit, and we, our mission statement is that we connect people, open minds, and enrich lives by creating and facilitating programs that encourage Hoosiers to think, read, and talk. So we are the State Humanities Council in Indiana, and we do a variety of public humanities programs throughout the state um, in action that looks like us. Uh, working with libraries, with schools, museums, cultural organizations, and we work together to provide programs and program opportunities related to the humanities, so things like history, literature, philosophy, culture, um, and then we also give a variety of grants. And so if you're interested in any of those opportunities, our website is indianahumanities.org, and you can learn more about us there. Um, so, as I said, we do a variety of programs, and one of our longest standing programs is called Novel Conversations, and that is a program that I have managed for the last few years, and it is a free statewide lending library of kits of books that we send to book clubs for free throughout the state. Um, so we use the interlibrary loan courier system, InfoExpress, and librarians or even people in communities uh, that have private book clubs can log onto a portal, request a kit of books that um, ranges anything from nonfiction to biography to fiction. We have some graphic novels, all kinds of things. Um, the kits have maybe eight to 25 copies and you can request those books to be sent through interlibrary loan um, and then you can read them with your book club for free. So um, this webinar kind of emerged out of this year during the pandemic. Novel Conversations was temporarily suspended for about four months from kind of March through July. And during that time period, um, while the courier was down and we couldn't send physical books and we knew that re people really shouldn't be meeting in person anyway, we suspended the program and I pulled you know, kind of the body of Novel Conversations users and got the sense that um, a resource that might be useful to a variety of you um, is for training on how to do a virtual webinar. So that is why we are here today. I know that many of you are tried and true Novel Conversations users, but we also have um, a variety of people who have joined us. So I wanna thank you all for joining us today. And we don't, since this is a webinar, we don't really have time to all do personal introductions, but I would love if in the chat, you would say your name and your affiliation, whether that's a library or if you're with a cultural institution, or even if you're just here today because you've got a private book club. Um, I will also, before we get too far into this, uh, give a few Zoom recommendations. As I said, this is a webinar, so if you would do your best to stay muted the whole time um, until the end when we get to Q&A, that would be great. That said, um, at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to, um, or I guess it's at the top of my screen, so maybe it's at the top of yours too, but there is a chat, um, and if you have any questions or comments as we go along, feel free to shoot those into the chat, and my wonderful colleague, Claire Mushbaugh, who does events and communications with us at Indiana Humanities, is here today to monitor the chat um, and those questions, and if any, if she feels like anything is pertinent during, she can pause me and we can um, address those questions, and then if not, we'll, we'll visit them at the end. Um, so I think that is most of what I want to say on the front end of this. I'm going to overview our agenda first. So I'm going to go through a few things um, all within this process of planning and hosting a virtual book club. Um, I'm going to talk about how you plan leading up to it. Uh, some technology and a variety of resources, <clears throat> excuse me, that are available as you're planning and uh, running your meeting. Um, then I'll talk through kind of best practices for running a virtual book club meeting, as well as facilitation tips 
um, in the virtual setting. And then, of course, uh, some fun ideas for how to make your book club interesting and not something that people dread going to as just another Zoom meeting that we all have so many of these days. And then to finish out, I'm going to kind of model a step-by-step -step process as if I were planning um, my own virtual book club. And then, as I said, we'll open up to Q&A. <clears throat> And welcome to any of you who have joined since I did my original introduction. My name is Bronwyn Carlisle with Indiana Humanities. So we're so glad you're with us today. All right, so <clears throat> as you're planning your virtual book club, um, first, and this is the case with any book club that you would be planning, but you wanna create some kind of communication plan. And there are a variety of ways that you can do this, but you'll wanna pick some kind of central hub where you are communicating with each other. And I think we all know that planning things virtually, especially in this kind of book club setting where things tend to happen organically, it can be a little bit trickier than it was in person. So normally, right, at the end of your book club, you'd all pull out your phones, you'd sit in a circle, and you'd you know, either continue on with your typical schedule of second Tuesday of the month, or you'd look and see what, you know, what your availability is the next month. And it's a little easier to do that in person. Well, you know, on Zoom, it's kind of harder because people, you know, things just get lost in translation. So there are a variety of things you can do. Um, you can have email conversations, you can do polls, and later I'm going to overview a few resources of um, things that make that kind of thing more helpful. So I'll get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty on that stuff later. You can set up a group, whether that be on Facebook or Goodreads, where you can kind of just have a central place where you can um, <clears throat> post this kind of stuff. Um, so that, that's the first thing. Create some kind of communication plan that everyone is comfortable with um, and that has a, a variety of capabilities. So then once you've got that plan, you've got to schedule your meeting date. As I said, that can be tricky, but there are some resources that can help. Once you've set your meeting date, you can pick your book. This also can be done through polling. As so many of you know, because you plan book club meetings all of the time, so much of having a successful meeting is picking a good book. And there's this balance between picking things that people will like, but also picking something that'll stretch everyone a little bit too. So um, there, what I would encourage is, especially if you use a polling option, which we'll go over later, maybe you do a pre-poll to the group and ask for suggestions so that you're getting a variety of different genres that you can add to that question, um, putting it together and then polling the group and, and doing your best to manage a variety of genres, different types of authors, bringing in diverse voices <clears throat> and things like that. All right, so this next one gets a little bit tricky right now, though it has gotten easier now that we are in a different stage of um, the pandemic than we were back in March. But with physical books right now, you'll have to find a way to distribute those to your book club members leading up to the meeting. So I'm sure most of you in the library settings have some kind of formalized version of this right now, whether it's curbside pickup or whether it's, you know, masked pickup at the CERC desk. Um, but if you are more, you know, not in the library setting, but more of just a, you have a personal book club and you're here today, um, you can think about whether you have your individual group members just get their book on their own, whether that is through their library, um, buying it from a indie bookstore or from bookshop.org, whether that is tracking down um, a virtual material such as an ebook or an audiobook. So there are a variety of ways that you can suggest to group members of how to get it. You also as book club member or book club leader, especially if you are getting materials from novel conversations from your library, you could volunteer to do porch drop-offs with the copies of the books or have them on your porch and have um, book club members pick up. So there are a variety of ways to think through this, um, but admittedly it is difficult right now with all things considered. Um, so you'll definitely wanna have a plan of how you'll distribute materials or have people access materials on their own. Um, and I will say, so many of you know because you are librarians, but uh, lots of libraries are investing in e-resources right now. So they're, um, you know, there's probably more of a likelihood that you would be able to find um, an e-book or audiobook through your library now than you might have been six months ago. Um, so my next suggestion in leading up to your 
your club itself is that once you have selected how you're going to do your meeting, which I'll talk about some various resources later once again, but I would suggest having a tech rehearsal. So even um, before today, before this webinar, Claire and I hopped on and we tested um, the various media we were going to use, made sure that the screen share worked, made sure we could hear each other and knew how to mute people. Um, and that kind of thing is just really good so that you're not messing around with all of that stuff the day of your meeting. Um, and you don't have people logging on because they, you know, confused because they can't hear or having trouble accessing microphone and that kind of thing. So um, with the tech rehearsal, of course, that's another thing to add to the calendar and not everyone may be available for it. But if you could have a few of the book club members hop on, test everything, make sure you're good to go. Um, I think that is a great plan <clears throat> leading up to your meeting. Then you will also want to designate a host and moderator. These can be the same person or it can be two different people. Um, in the case of today, like for Claire and me in this webinar, I'm kind of the host and Claire's the moderator. So sometimes it's useful if you have two people because then one of you can kind of pay attention to the like visual, what you see with everyone, and another can pay attention to the technology. Um, and then later when I'm talking about facilitation tips, um, those those roles also will have some extra things to think about in the virtual setting. And then lastly, I would suggest even um, if it's not something you normally do for book club meeting, but for a virtual book club meeting, I think it's good to create some kind of loose agenda. This does not have to be something, you know, we're going to spend five minutes and 35 seconds talking about this, and then we're gonna spend two minutes doing this. It doesn't need to be like that. But if you at least map out a few like bullet points of what you wanna do, where you wanna go, can be as simple as something like greetings and check-ins, impressions of the book, discussion questions, snack and drinks. You know, it can be that simple, but if you at least have a roadmap for where you're headed, then things just won't devolve into utter chaos on the call. And you can kind of, it also gives you a tool to help guide things back um, to where, where things should be headed. Um, okay. So now I am going to talk about some specific um, technology and virtual resources that might be useful for you as you are pre-planning your virtual book club um, and then also running it. So um, back to what I was talking about with pre-planning, there are a few resources that I think might be useful in this capacity. The first would be Doodle Poll. I am sure a lot of you have used Doodle Polls in the past, um, but it is a great free resource that you can find online where you can um, email a it's for scheduling, and you can email a scheduling poll to your group. You can specify which times um, that you're trying to poll specifically. Um, they can indicate which ones worked for them, and then you as the leader would get emails back and can very easily track which time works for everyone. Again, your book club may have a standing date, second Tuesday of every month, but in the case that you don't, um, that would be a great tool. Another tool for pre-planning, especially when it would come to book selection, would be surveying. And this could be done through things like SurveyMonkey and Google Forms, which both have free um, versions that you can use um, and create. And something like SurveyMonkey, too, you could pull for both time availability and book selection. So some of these you can double up and use them for a variety of different um, reasons. And then lastly, and this, um, I think is really exciting, especially for the book club setting, is you can set up groups. And these can be public groups, such, you know, if you're a librarian and you want this to be a bigger book club that people, you know, all log into, um, you can just have a Facebook group for that, or a Facebook group for that book club. Or um, really exciting are the Goodreads groups. And these are um, just absolutely perfect for this kind of thing. And I'll show you later how this looks, but you can create a group that has all your members in it. Of course, they'd need to have a Goodreads account. Um, you can do polls there. You can post pre-media in the Goodreads group. You can schedule events where you could even load in your Zoom link or your Google chat link. Um, and 
built into Goodreads, of course, as I'm sure many of you know, then you can also explore the books. You can find um, different resources to read, information about the author. And again, I'll show you this a little bit more in action, but I definitely wanted to highlight that as you're thinking about what kind of central hub might work best for your group, I think um, Goodreads is you know, kind of perfectly created for this. I will say about Facebook or Goodreads, both of those would require people to be a part of those platforms. And you may have people who want to be part of the book club that aren't on Facebook. And so in that case, maybe email is your best bet or using some of these polling softwares that don't require people to have accounts. But I did at least want to flag that. All right. So next, you need to pick your platform. And so there are a variety of platforms. My favorite and the one that we are using today is Zoom. I think um, kind of as many of us have found during this pandemic, um, there's a reason that a lot of us are using Zoom. And I think it allows, in the way that you can see everyone at the same time, um, it allows you to feel like you're still kind of in communication with the whole group. Some of the others maybe will bring up a, just one screen as someone's talking or they have limits of how many people you can see at one time. Um, but there are drawbacks with all of these. So for instance, with Zoom, there, there is a free version, but it is only free for up to 40 minutes. So I don't know about you, but most book club meetings that I have ever been a part of are a little bit longer than 40 minutes. So the solution to that is that only one person in the case of Zoom would need to have an account. And as long as they had the premium account um, that is a monthly subscription, they could send the link and anyone else can join for free. But of course there are drawbacks. Uh, with Google Hangouts, it is free, but limited to 10 people at a time. So I think most book clubs kind of fall under that 10 people at a time limit, but in the library setting, maybe not, especially if it's more of like a programmatic type book club. Um, FaceTime, of course, everyone would need to have an iPhone in your group, so that's the drawback there. And then GoToMeeting and Skype, similarly, um, uh, Skype is limited to 50 people, so that's more than enough, uh, but GoToMeeting has fees attached and that kind of stuff. So I would suggest you tinker around with the various platforms and see which works best for your group. It may be that, hey, you all have iPhones, so you can just do an iPhone or a FaceTime and it's as easy as that and you don't have to send pre-links and that kind of stuff. So all kinds of things to think about, but my personal opinion, if you ask me, is that I like Zoom. All right, so now we will think about running the meeting. So when you start the meeting, you will want to, like I did before we did the webinar today, just give a quick Zoom overview, if that's the platform you decide to use, and highlight some of the features. So um, tell folks that when they're not talking to mute themselves, you can highlight these virtual reactions. Where did mine go? Oh, whoops, sorry. I was trying to do my virtual reaction and I can't find it in this. Screen. Oh, Claire's got it. So you can see Claire is clapping. Um, so if someone says something really cool, you can do that kind of thing. Um, and you can also just uh, encourage people to do nonverbal responses, whether that be, you know, like this kind of clapping, thumbs up, that kind of stuff. So there are ways uh, that you can, in that original or, or that first little overview at the beginning of your meeting, things you can highlight um, to to make the conversation flow seamlessly. Then, as I said earlier, you will want to designate a moderator, whether that's yourself or whether that's someone who's tech savvy in your book club who can um, manage some of those things. And then also that moderator can introduce some just, you know, basic rules um, and best practices so that you know, as we all know, in book club meetings, people can get really fired up. You might have a few chatty Cathy's who are, you know, dominating most of the discussion. But if you have a moderator, you can have someone who maybe can sense like, oh, I see Tina over here has been trying to talk the last three times. So, you know, if you have that set person, no one's going to get offended if they say, oh, Tina, you know, speak up. So, as you know, that's the case in any book club. So a lot of these things you are just translating to the virtual setting, just understanding that some of this stuff gets a little bit trickier. And then the last thing I would suggest in your meeting is have a natural stopping point 
some way, you know, at the end of your discussion so that anyone who really needs to leave doesn't feel trapped. Because we all know how that feels. Some of you may feel that way right now that you're like, oh, I kind of want to get out of this, but, you know, I feel trapped. But luckily, we're all muted, so I wouldn't notice. But we've all kind of experienced that, especially in these discussion settings. So if you have a stopping point, say 45 minutes after the beginning of the meeting, an hour, you can stop. Those who have to go put their kids to bed or do something like that can hop off. And then anyone who wants to stay on and keep chatting can. And if you as the host have to hop off on Zoom, you can make someone else the host in your absence and it works swimmingly. So that is my suggestion there. So now I wanna go over some virtual facilitation tips. I was touching on this a little bit on the previous slide, um, but, and when I was talking about the agenda, but keep things casual but organized, I would say. So part of the fun of book club is the fact that it feels like you're having a conversation with friends, not a formal meeting, right? And it's meaningful and you feel like you're connecting with people um, and you don't want kind of the new rules of moderation and the agenda and all of that to kind of feel like regulations and make it feel too formal or stifling. So instead, just use that agenda as a guide, but not a rule book. And you can adapt when necessary. If discussion seems to be going really well and you want to cut, you know, one of your activities a little short, or if discussion's not going well and you want to transfer into snack time earlier, that kind of thing. So keep it casual, but also stay a little organized so that things don't get chaotic. Another suggestion I have for facilitating conversation is that you can extend your conversation beyond just the video chat. So whether that be before your conversation or after it, you can use, for instance, a shared hashtag on Twitter related to your book and have a conversation there. You could create a virtual discussion thread in the Goodreads group that I was highlighting earlier, or if you have a Facebook group. Um, you could use a group message on your phones and have questions there ahead. And I will mention at this point also, just if your group is kind of resistant to video chats or that kind of technology and doesn't feel comfortable, this might be a way to just all together still have a kind of quote unquote book club meeting um, without having the video stuff. So you could just transfer your meeting to a written thread type of thing. And while obviously that's not ideal, that may be the solution for your group during, during this crazy time. So, and that's a way that you can still keep each other accountable, keep reading, stay in communication, um, and stay on track and that kind of thing. So next, another facilitation tip would be to utilize those technologies that are available that might not be in real life. So it's really cool, um, at, and I've, I'm sure all of you have experienced this during various meetings that you're doing, but while there's a mass, you know, a larger conversation going on, you can kind of have like a secondary conversation going on in chats that can be kind of more multimedia. You can send links, you can, you know, mention other things, and it, it adds a really interesting layer to conversation that doesn't exist in the, in the face-to-face physical setting. So I would just say take advantage of those extra um, tools that are available. Um, and then, as I said earlier, encourage group members to use nonverbal cues when possible, especially if someone else is speaking. If they want to talk next, raise their hand. There is also a raise hand feature in Zoom and the participants tab, that kind of thing. Um, and then I would also suggest, and any of you who host book clubs know this, um, but have some backup questions just handy if conversation is not moving along organically, because I think especially in, the especially in the virtual setting, sometimes things can get a little bit awkward, and it's just good to have that in your back pocket to be able to pull up. And then I'd highlight once again, when in doubt, just facilitate how you would in real life. I mean, yes, it is different. Um, and there are extra challenges in the virtual setting, but a lot of those tried and true, you know, book club facilitation uh, techniques that you would have translate well. So asking if you, again, if you see someone trying to cut into the conversation, address them by name and say so-and-so. Did you have something to say? Someone's talking a little bit too much. Do your best to, to manage that. So translate those, those skills into this setting as well. 
All right, so now this is the fun stuff. So you are going to want to make your virtual book club meeting fun, especially with the introduction of the new rules you might be adding and the agenda and the, you know, moderation and tips and things. You don't want it to feel like an, the book club to feel like an obligation or something that people are dreading. And I know personally, just from a personal sense, on those days when I had like eight Zoom calls at work, and then I know I have like a friend hangout in the evening or, you know, some sort of nighttime meeting. It's like the last thing I want to do. So what I will say is you'll want to just add something that makes it not something you dread. For me, that would be snacks. Because I will say right now, as I've been home so much, one of the things I look forward most of all to right now is food. So especially if it's some special food that I've been thinking about all week that I'm going to have at this book club, um, that, you know, that's something that's going to have me really excited. So add things like that that are going to make people want to come and not dread it. So um, a few ideas I'm going to go through of how to make things fun is first, and this may sound boring, I'm a nerd, so this is fun to me, but maybe it's not fun to you, but have some kind of pre-discussion presentation in your Zoom call that makes things a little bit more interactive. So whether that, once you select your book, whether that's a slideshow with images about the author, um, about the setting of the book, that kind of thing, you know, in person, I, I suppose you could like turn on the TV and do a presentation in a normal book club. That would be maybe a little weird and I'm not sure everyone does that. But in the virtual setting, you are so set up to do this that, you know, it almost feels like, well, why wouldn't we? So that's an idea. Another idea would be you could incorporate trivia into your book club meeting. So there are a variety of ways you could do this. Kahoot is one online resource that's really good for this kind of thing. A lot of you are librarians, so I'm sure you know about Kahoot, but that's something that you can create a quiz, load it in here. Everyone then gets on their phones and can log on and do the quiz. Um, and it would be a fun way. So one idea I had for this is if you want to see who really read the book for book club, you can just do basically reading retention questions and see if anyone's bluffing um, and that kind of thing. Um, or you could do quiz questions about the author, all kinds of stuff. You could also alternately just create a quiz on PowerPoint um, and keep score yourself. And a fun thing that I would say for this is you can make it competitive by having prizes. So we um, on Indiana Humanities had to get really creative earlier this summer uh, for our staff retreat. And our staff retreat is normally really fun. We go to our boss's lake house in northern Indiana. We spend two days together playing games, doing all kinds of things, eating really good snacks. So I think we were all kind of bummed when we knew that our staff retreat would have to be virtual this summer. Um, but we came up with some ideas. We played uh, bingo. And that, again, we're all nerds, so that may not sound fun to you. But we played bingo over Zoom. That worked really well. And um, the fun part of that was I kind of got to think through how I could do prizes virtually. So a way to do prizes is you can send a Starbucks gift card to someone's email address, and then they can go get coffee through the drive through Or you could send them a gift card to an indie bookstore to their email address. Um, so you'd need to arrange, you know, of course, how you would fund these prizes, whether that's if your group comes together and kind of just pools a couple bucks each month um, for your book club for that kind of thing. But I think um, prizes and games definitely make things a little more interesting. And while I'm on the bingo front, that could be a thing, too, is you could create a bingo card for your um, book club of common things that happen, like, you know, so and so interrupts. No, you wouldn't want to be rude. But you know, you could create a bingo card and that may be another just fun way to have that to the side of the book club while you're um, having your conversation and then halfway through someone yells bingo and I, you know, could be fun. So that's an idea, games and prizes. And then of course, I said this already, but I cannot stress the importance of this one enough, but snacks, drinks, coffee, whatever you have. But I think, you know, any good book club knows the importance of snacks. And that's one of the sad things about this virtual setting is that we can't share our food and drink together in the same way that we could before, but that's not entirely the case. So I think especially um, if you have a book that just speaks really well to a theme, you can come up with themed snacks. You can send the recipe to each other ahead of time. 
and make it on your own that week and have it ready. You could have one kind of person who's in charge of the snack committee who volunteers to make it that week and does porch drop-offs, all kinds of stuff. So um, I think definitely do not forget about the importance of snack and drink. And when you can theme it to the book, I think that just makes it makes it way more fun. On the drink um, note, you could, if you decide to plan like a fun specialty cocktail, um, you could give everyone the ingredients ahead of time and then you could make it together on the call. So that would be fun. Am I lagging a little bit? I, okay, it just looked like my, my video was lagging. So I apologize for that. Um, so yes, that is that idea. Another idea would be to um, do surprise porch drop-offs. So again, this ties into snacks again, but um, you could even prior to book club, if you're the one dropping off the books to people, you could do like a little party favor that's related to the book. Um, and even a handwritten note goes a long way these days. So if you're the one who's dropping off all the books, just write everyone a nice note. And I know, as I said with food, mail is another one of those things right now that I look forward to each week, you know? Indian Humanities has been working from home and we still are, so just, any little diversion to my day, whether that's mail or food, is just welcome these days. So don't underestimate the power of a handwritten note. Um, and then my next uh, suggestion is if you're reading an Indiana book or a book by, I guess they don't even have to be local, but you'd you know have to make contact with them. But you could invite the author of your book, especially if you know they're a pretty down to earth person with not a lot else to do. But you could invite them to join your Zoom discussion at the beginning um, and talk about it a, a little bit. Or alternately, if you're reading a nonfiction book um, that's about some scientific topic or a historical topic. You could invite a local college professor or a high school teacher who is an expert in that area and ask them um, to just give some context to the book that you read. And then this last idea is if you're reading a book, let's say, I don't know, but a book that has a video adaptation, a TV adaptation or a movie adaptation, after your book club, it doesn't have to be the same night, let's say you do it the next week, but you could have a watch party. And this could be together live, you could watch it, plan snacks again, or it could even be through social media. You could all decide to watch it at the same time, have a group text or a Twitter thread or something like that. So those are some ideas for making things fun. All right, so now I want to, if you'll bear with me, we're going to pretend that I am planning my book club and you're gonna travel along with me on the way. Okay. So step one, as I said, is finding my date. I mentioned the doodle poll, so I'll just show you in action how this might look. Um, one moment. Alrighty. Can you see my poll? Great, okay, one moment, it's loading. All right, so if you see here, I set up my book club meeting here on Doodle. I've picked some time slots in a week that I preset, and we can see that Christopher, John, Patty, and Mary Ellen have already responded, um, and I can add my response here. My screen starts loading, there we go. Got me, oh, I'm available Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I can send that. Oops, I should have done Tuesday, because now we're not. Oh, no, Thursday works. <laughs> okay, so it looks like our book club, based on this, all five of us are available on Thursday. If it loads. <laughs> well, my internet is going slowly. As you all know, these are the joys of working from home. <sighs> Okay, well, we were all available on Thursday. So based on my doodle poll, we'd plan the club for Thursday. Excellent. Okay, so now I've got my date. Now I need to, whoops, sorry. All 
All right, can you see my presentation? Okay. So now I'm going to send a poll to my group to select what book we're going to read. And this is now where I want to show you some of the cool features of a Goodreads group. So I will go to this. So in this case, you can see polls that I've created here in my group. Which book would you like to read this month? Um, and it's really cool on Goodreads. It integrates the books themselves. So if I wanted to read about each of these four books before I make my vote, I can click on these links. It'll take me to a page where there are all kinds of um, reviews from readers and experts and all kinds of different people. Um, so I'm gonna vote for Little Fires Everywhere here. There's my vote. I'm the only one who voted because I created this for myself for a fake book club. So <laughs> we're gonna read that book in my book club today. But I just wanna show you here on the side, here are all of the various things you can do. So this is a group I created, my book club, um, but you can have, you can keep track of all the books you have ever read together on your bookshelf. You can have discussions, so pre-questions and things that you would be having before, during, or after reading. You can set events, and that's where you could even load in the Zoom link to that event, and everyone could just come here and everything you need would be here. You can upload photos of the group if you, you know, have screenshots of your Zoom call or in, in the case that we ever do start gathering together again. Um, videos, here's where you could up load um, YouTube videos, uh, the links to the YouTube videos of an interview with the author, that kind of thing. Um, you can track who's in your group. So this is just a really, it's kind of just the perfect type of format for planning a book club. And then it works really well too for the, um, the virtual book club. So go back to this. All righty. So now we have got my date, we're meeting on Thursday. I've got my book, we're reading Little Fires Everywhere. Okay. So now I need to set up a video call link and send that to my book club members. And I can either do that by email if that's our you know, agreed upon communication, or I can just add it to that Goodreads group in the event and they can, they can um, get it from there or the Facebook group if that's what you do as well. Or you can do it in multiple ways. So in my case, I'd probably do both. If I had my Goodreads group, I'd upload the link in there. I'd also probably email it to everyone, send it in a text, that kind of thing. So now it's time to do the fun stuff. So my book club picked Little Fires Everywhere um, from the poll. So I'm gonna circulate materials uh, to the group for pre-reading on my Goodreads page, maybe an interview with Celeste Ng, um, links and videos. I might pre-post the discussion questions so people are percolating thoughts leading up to the discussion. Um, if I want to create a poll about if people liked it or not, I can do that kind of thing. I could circulate recipes that I may want people to create ahead of the reading. So for this book, maybe I'll be doing fire themed things or treats reminiscent of like 1990s suburbia. You know, there are all, kind of, all kinds of ideas you could do for this book. Um, and then during this time too, I would also wanna make sure that everyone has a way to read the book. So whether that's through Novel Conversations, we do have this title, um, or through the library, e-readers, a local bookstore, et cetera. So then since I am the host ahead of the meeting, I'll create the agenda, I will curate and write discussion questions and determine those kind of ground rules for the meeting. Then the day before the meeting, I'm gonna hold my tech rehearsal with those who are available, we're gonna test sound and video. We're gonna make sure that I know how to share my screen, if I'm gonna be doing that, um, make sure my trivia works, if I'm doing that, that kind of thing. So it's time for my meeting. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, I'm gonna go over our ground rules, share my agenda, give a brief presentation about Celeste Ng and the book. I'll probably talk about how she herself grew up in Shaker Heights, which is where the book takes place. You know, I'll make it interesting. Um, my presentation will probably have images and video. And then after the presentation, I'll get my group started with a first question to help guide conversation. In the middle, I might do trivia or, you know, with the e-gift card as a prize. Um, and then along the way, I'm gonna keep my eye on time against my agenda to make sure we're moving, but I'm not gonna be like 
militant about it. I'm just going to make sure we're, we're moving forward at a good pace. And then at that agreed upon stopping point that I mentioned earlier, I'll pause and anyone who needs to go can hop off the call. And then the rest of us are going to stay on and maybe, you know, make our specialty cocktail together or um, have a yummy snack that we all prepared ahead of things. And then I'll wrap things up and we'll do it all over again next time. So the cycle can repeat. So five key takeaways from our conversation, not conversation, I talked to you for 40 minutes, but from my presentation today um, is that you'll want to pick an online forum uh, where you can post logistical information, but that might also augment your conversation. So that could be something like a Facebook group or a Goodreads group um, or a group chat. You will want to select hey, video Roman. software. Yes. Did someone say my name? Oh. You, you cut out for a second there. Can you do the second point again? I can. Can you hear me again? Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay. So then next you're going to want to select a video chat software that works best for your group. Um, considering a variety of factors like cost, function, ease of use, etc. I will highlight again, if you think that video chat just isn't the thing for your group, you've got people who are pretty tech averse, you know, you can do written discussions right now. You could even do phone calls at that point. You know, you could do a group call, a few of you, you could read it together and you could have one-off conversations with each other, that kind of thing. Three, you'll want to set ground rules for your virtual conversation to ensure that each person's voice can be heard. And again, a moderator um, can help enforce, enforce is a strong term. Again, we're not like enforcing, but can help um, remind people of these guidelines. Um, and then number four, just expect that there will be glitches and hiccups and bumps along the way. But um, having a tech rehearsal can help minimize some of those issues. And then lastly, and I think perhaps most importantly in these times, is that you want to make things fun and meaningful. Um, we know by now that the virtual meetings just kind of lack a little bit of the pizzazz of being together with friends. So if you do something special that makes it something you're looking forward to all week, um, then, then it won't be so bad. <clears throat> All right, and I just want to close today by thanking all of you for listening to me for 43 minutes here. And uh, this is my contact information. I want to reiterate that I am here to help any of you. So if you are planning your own virtual book club and run into snags or have additional questions, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call and I am happy to help. And then I also want to highlight once again that I am with Indiana Humanities. You can see our website there at indianahumanities.org. We have all kinds of resources for all kinds of Hoosiers. So um, if you want to know more about Indiana Humanities, uh, you can also send me an email to ask for information or go to our website. So now I want to open up for Q&A and I'm going to stop my screen share here. So I don't know if we had any questions, but if we do, I am happy to answer any. There was this one right in the chat. If you want to start with that one. All right. And the question is, in your experience, is there any time of day that you suggest? That is a great question. That's a great question. What I would say is most people are going to need to do evening time for a book club because I guess that's circumstantial. So if you are doing a book club with people who don't have a day job and who, you know, for whatever reason, perhaps daytime. But I would say for the wide variety of um, folks that are going to be in a book club, at least someone is going to need to do evening time. I'd say probably stay away from like a Friday or Saturday night. I think people tend to like to keep those um, sacred for, you know, family, that kind of thing. Um, and Wednesday nights, people tend to have lots of um, obligations of kinds, though maybe not right now while schedules are um, more simple. But I would say Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, um, are good days for this kind of thing. All right. How to get folks engaged when trying to start a book club. Um, so I think you, there could be a number of ways, but it's also based on what context and setting you're in. So if you are a librarian, that might look like um, having a teaser on Facebook that's teasing the book club, asking people to sign up, um, sign ups and 
flyers on doors for when people are doing curbside pickup. Um, if you are just having a personal book club, um, I think just hyping it up, making sure that the first book you pick is like a slam dunk, really like a crowd pleaser, and that's going to keep people um, coming back for more. Authors, publishers, thank you, Montoya. Also post short author interviews on their YouTube channel and websites. We like to view those clips during virtual live discussion. That is a wonderful idea. Yes, so if you can't have the author, you know, come in live to your book club, which nine times out of 10 probably is not gonna be the case. Montoya is so right that authors, a lot of them think about book clubs when they're packaging their um, publicity materials and that kind of thing. So definitely go to publisher websites and author websites to see to see what they might have available. All right, we'll leave it open just a little bit longer for any questions, but I just wanna thank all of you again today for coming by. I will, I have been recording this, so if this would be useful to any of you in any context, um, I will upload it probably onto the Novel Conversations page and send it out in my monthly Novel Conversations bulletin as well. Um, I think we may have had one more question. Great question, Jay. Does Indiana Humanities run a book club itself other than Novel Conversations? And we do. It is virtual right now, and it is called Books, Booze, and Brains. It is. It stemmed out of a programming we did related to the intersection of science and the humanities, the humanities a few years back, and it was so popular that we just kept doing it. Um, so that book club puts a scientist in conversation with um, like a humanist and they discuss the book together. Um, so bringing in kind of that scientific context, but then also thinking about it from a literary perspective. So that is one uh, book club. You can find more information about that online. It is virtual for now, but has been in person in the past. Um, let's see. Oh, I love this. I'm loving to hear about Indiana authors who are joining your book clubs. Kelsey Timmerman, wonderful. Susan Crandall. Wow. Love this. That's the thing is that so many of these in Indiana authors are so generous in spirit. So especially if you're reading local books, I think it doesn't hurt to shoot an email. And right now everyone's so willing to do virtual stuff that, you know, does, doesn't hurt to try. Oh, great, Jay. <laughs> Jay's been to Books, Booze, and Brains. All right. Did I miss any questions, Claire? I think got most of them. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for joining me. And please feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call if you need any help. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.